Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish. If you're new here, hi. If you've been here before, then you know that I've got a lot of aquariums going on, and one of them is this big paludarium right here with a new ribbed newt in it, an Iberian or Spanish ribbed newt, and he's just doing amazing. I gotta start by saying that. I know the videos about the fish that we have in quarantine right now, but the ribbed newt's doing amazing. You're probably gonna see him swimming up and down here, I think. No, I guess he's still hiding right now, but you'll probably see him come out. He's very, very active. So before we do the deep dive on all the stuff that we've done previously and all the stuff that we're gonna do next, Let's talk about the point of the video, which is why the majority of you random viewers are here. And that is the humpback limia, which we now have in quarantine. If you guys want to see an update video on them, it'll be coming out later. So stay subscribed and you'll see more updates on those. So what is this new weird live bear? It's not a molly, it's not a type of platy, it's not even a type of killifish. It's called the humpback limia and it's also going by like the black striped limia and some people call it the tiger live bear or whatever. Horrible name. I like the black banded limia, but I think that humpback limia is more common. So earlier today, Zach and I went to Critter Jungle, our new favorite fish store. Well, not so new, but now it's the only fish store we ever really go to, and they had some of these guys. Now I've been spotting these guys for a while. They've kind of been there every time that I've been there, and no one really bought them. And I thought to myself, huh, I wonder if they'd do well with our newt. If you guys have been on the channel long enough, you know that I don't really like live bears, honestly. Like, I've had guppies, I've had platies, and I just never really liked them. Like, I like the more expensive fish, like the rainbow fish, and I like tetras and stuff like that. But here's the problem with that. My water has a pH of 9.0, and the hardness is off the charts. It is the most well, well water that you can ever well. And because of that, there's a very small range of fish that will actually work with my water. And one of them are live bears, or most live bears. Although I'm not sure of their exact origin, probably somewhere in Central America, humpback limia are one of those live bears that love hard water. And so I had to pick them up for my tank. Although I am making a turn to only get hard water fish, minus the coolie loach and bristlenose pleco, which I already had, there are some other reasons why I picked these guys out. For starters, they are live bears, which means that I will be making some money back by selling these guys. Now with a lot of fish, I think I've discussed this in a previous video, but with a lot of live bearing fish, really easy to breed fish, it's awesome. You know, you think you're gonna make a lot of money back, here's the issue, everyone's breeding those as well. Whether it's convict cichlids, crebenzis, uh, guppies especially, shrimp aren't usually a problem but they still breed a lot, and especially snails. Those can be species that are really fun to breed, really easy to breed, but then you have no buyers and you're just left with a ton of fish. The worst of them is probably crayfish. The difference with these guys is this is the only time that I've ever seen them in Canada. I believe they're a little bit popular in the US. I have seen them on Primetime Aquatics' channel. I'll probably have a link to that in the comments or in the description if I remember to. But because they're not very popular in Canada, the market is absolutely wide open. Right now, there's only three people that I know of who own these guys in all of the Ottawa area, and that being me, Zach, who has one male, and someone out there who I saw in Kijiji that has a male and two females. For me, that means that this very easy to breed fish doesn't have a lot of competition in terms of my market. And while these fish are only $2 a piece at the store that I'm planning on selling them to, if they have enough babies, and in my water they should, then I'll be making some serious money back. Plus, it is fun to breed fish, as long as you know what you're doing with the babies once there's too many of them. So I got these fish because they're cool, you know, they're a cool fish. They love hard water, which is what I have. They're easy to breed and there's a good market for it, but also because I want them to be the next part of my paludarium. And you can see two swimming around in there. Uh, and the reason for that is I did have other fish in here. In fact, I had, I still have technically Kuliloches, I had Corydoras, I had a Harlequin Rasboras, and the Harlequins and Corydoras I got out because of a combination of I don't want Toot uh, eating them. There's a lot of bad stories where Newts will eat uh, a fish with barbs like catfish do and it'll kill them both um, but also because both those, those are soft water. Now I still have the coolie loaches in there, I'm working on getting them out, it's a very difficult process. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have them all out but... So the reason that I'm putting these fish in there is because they're going to fill that gap and also because they fill the gap really well. I was checking out some of the other fish at the pet store, I was checking out especially the flag fish 
which were the close contender, and I ended up going with the humpback Limia because ultimately they are a lot cheaper. They're about half the price. They breed way easier. I think uh, flagfish are like a cave spawner or like they'll dig a pit, but that's definitely gonna get eaten by my newt. And they are way less aggressive and way less shy. So like much better in that, in that fish tank when this whole room becomes a dining room for everyone that comes in to see. Unfortunately, even though these fish are amazing, I still have to quarantine them for a month, which is why you guys are not gonna see them go in in this video. This is the reality of fish keeping. You can't just throw fish in. I'm trying to learn this. I have not done that at all. Well, maybe a little bit in my last few years of fish keeping, but I'm really trying to do it now to keep the rest of my uh, livestock safe. Like I said, both Zach and I got some of these fish. I got eight of them, technically. I got two males, I got five females, and I got one unsexed baby, while Zach got one male. And upon bringing it home to his absolutely gorgeous nine gallon Fluval Flex tank, which I'm showing right now, beautiful tank, he found that it had a possible bacterial infection in the gills. So I am medicating uh, the, the quarantine tank, the five gallon quarantine tank with Supertect, super good Canadian medication that's easy to get where, where a lot of medications are not easy to get. So I'm gonna be medicating with them with that for probably about a month. Okay, so now moving on. Can we move on? Can we do it? Moving on to the big boy itself, the 75 gallon, ooh, paludarium, the middle part. That is not the middle part. <laughs> the middle part is what we will start with in there right now is Toot, who is my ribbed Spanish rib newt. He's super awesome. Also, I think like five Kaliloches are still in there, which I have to get out because unfortunately, a few days ago, Toot uh, bit one of the Kaliloches. It didn't kill it necessarily, but it did shock it and it might have caused a possible secondary bacterial infection. So while I did treat it with Supertect for a few days, it ultimately ended up passing away during the night. So like I said, tomorrow hopefully I'll have all the Kali Loaches out of there, so that'll just be toot until I'm able to put the live bears in. In other news, we also have nothing in ooh, the corner tank, right over there. <laughs> we did get some driftwood for it, we did get a cryptocorine plant for it, the cryptocorine's doing Okay, I mean, you guys know how hard water is on plants. Probably it's the worst kind of water for plants. They just can't absorb anything. High pH, also not good for plants. But hopefully we are able to put some livestock in there. I'm kind of back and forth with ideas. At one point I wanted a stone catfish, but then it's like, ah, South American, I can't do it, right? It's too soft for the water that they're used to. So now I'm thinking I'm probably going to do cherry shrimp. I'm gonna take Hope's Cull cherry shrimp, like I said, just the ones that she doesn't want. She's getting a really nice bright orange color. Hopefully I have the picture here of it. And I'm just gonna take all of her kind of less colorful ones. I may also put an African door frog in that little corner tank. There is like a driftwood staircase in there, so it's not gonna be like he's you know, all the way down here and he can't get to the top. There is a little way for him to climb up when he needs oxygen. Let me know what you guys think about that. I've never really had a lot of luck with African dwarf frogs. And also if I can't get him eating pellets, then it's gonna be even more difficult. I will quarantine him first, but let me know what you guys think. Now off to, ooh, there it is. Anakin's little terrarium side to the paludarium. Anakin is my Bahamana knoll, and I have some big changes that I'm thinking of implementing with him. So when it comes to Anakin, and this may be a shock for some of you guys, but I'm probably gonna be rehoming Anakin the Bahamana Null. I feel like the reason for this should be pretty obvious. Um, I love fish because they come out, you know, like even my my twig catfish, I love my twig catfish. I named both of them, I, or three of them, um, but they were always out. They were camouflaged, but they were always out. I could always see them, but with Anakin, even though he camouflages really well, as soon as I come close to the tank, he's gone. He doesn't want to be seen. And that is with a lot of cover. The truth is, some reptiles are just going to be hiding all the time. There's nothing you can really do about it. I said in previous videos that I think if I put more anoles in there, it could solve the problem. It could make them a little bit less shy. But ultimately, if that doesn't, then here I am with like two or three more anoles that I have to feed and I never see. So because I'm basically keeping a terrarium that's just got mealworms in it, I'm probably going to be taking it down. That said, I really do like taking care of bugs, weirdly enough. So I'm going to keep that little five gallon terrarium, we're going to talk about it later, for bugs. And again, we'll talk about that later. So what becomes of that big terrarium side corner tank? once it's no longer meant for reptiles. And honestly, that's been more liberating than stressful. I have a ton of cool ideas. I'd love to hear your ideas, but right now what I'm thinking is, you know how I kind of have it like 
this corner it's like fine sand kind of rough sand and i think i'm going to do like river stone and gravel in here it might make it a bit of a faster flowing tank keep the sponges in here faster flowing over here could be a really cool idea and i'm going to try and breed dwarf crayfish now i know i just said that crayfish are one of the worst things you can possibly breed but dwarf crayfish stay quite small and because of that they're not really a threat to your other fish and everyone wants them for the community tank so it's a big sell and they're worth like 15 bucks each i think as for what goes above them i've played around with a few ideas i played around with uh there's kind of obvious ones like i could do minnows in there i really actually like the look of uh, mountain minnows i'm not sure how easy they are to breed people say they're super easy Zach says that when they're fry, they are almost certain to die because they're too small to eat absolutely anything. So I've also thought about killifish. It seems like most killifish actually hate my water and they probably eat the baby crayfish. I think what I'll do, and I thought they were really cool at Critter Jungle, are the Furcata rainbow fish. They've got like that yellow, they've got a little bit of reddish orange. They've got the blue eyes, which kind of breaks you out of the green to orange theme that I've got going on here, but I think they look really cool. They're a midwater swimmer, so they're not gonna go down and eat the crayfish hopefully. And most importantly, rainbow fish love hard water. Still, that one's kind of up in the air, so if you guys have other ideas, let me know. Moving on, and hopefully this video isn't too long, we have Ethan's eventual 40-gallon aquarium. It's going to have all the cool loaches in it, it's going to have the bristlenose pleco in it, it's probably going to have his zebra loaches in it, and then it's going to have his platies and his rainbow cichlid, and I don't know if he's going to do anything after that. Honestly, I'm just leaving that aquarium up to him, he's going to do whatever he wants with it. I don't want to take over because I have a bad habit of that. I just want to see what he can do and we'll put it on the channel. And finally moving on to our last little small tanks over here which you guys can't see. They're probably going to be going upstairs in my new uh, room because this is becoming a dining room. And the first one is the five gallon terrarium which we're probably going to use for bugs. Like honestly I actually love bugs. They're so cool when they're contained and they're not, you know, mosquitoes don't count. They do not. Actually mosquitoes are the only true bugs between what I have and them. So. But I'm thinking of doing isopods in there, I'm thinking of doing springtails, stuff like that. Uh, darkling beetles, I might breed mealworms in there. I don't know why, but like, I don't know. It's, it's something to breed and it's cool to watch that process happen. I think it could be really cool to have a centipede in there. There's a lot of centipedes and millipedes and stuff like that around my house. But there's not really care guides on that kind of stuff, so I, I might do it. I don't know. I might order in bugs. It just could be a cool bug experience that I've never done before and I'm really excited to get into it. It also gives me a chance to use all of this whoop, leftover stuff from Anakin's side of the Paladarium. You can just put all that soil in there, all the leaf litter in there, and the bugs can use that. And I could have some plants growing in there as well, which I think would be pretty cool. Gets me into the world of plants, which I'm not really comfortable with yet, but we'll probably get there. And lastly, I'm sorry, this video's been a marathon. The 10 gallon aquarium, which Hope had as her tank. She thought it was leaking, so I took it back. And now I'm thinking that I'm going to turn it into a paludarium of some sort, possibly. Current ideas for the paludarium are pea puffers, which do really well in hard water. Uh, different types of gobies. There's rhino gobies. There's uh, bumblebee gobies. There's stiphodon gobies. I could just keep it as a fry tank. And I've also thought about having African dwarf frogs in there and just having plants grow out of it. Now, I think that's all. I did forget to mention that I'm going to put inverts into the paludarium at one point. I'm probably going to have, I mean, other than the crayfish, I'm probably going to have a mono shrimp in there. I'm probably going to have nerite snails in there at some point, probably in the next video or so. But other than that, I think that is the whole update. So sorry if you guys were expecting like a care guide on humpback limia. It's, it's coming at some point, but I hope you guys are excited for all the new awesome stuff that's going on with my tanks. There's way more tanks in my house than I ever thought they would be. So hopefully my parents are still okay with that. And yeah, so I hope that I can keep inspiring you guys with these videos, showing you all these fish that you've never had before, and maybe showing you new ways to keep fish that you have had before. So anyways, guys, if you want to see more of me, more of Toot, make sure you subscribe. You'll see all the new content, all the new ideas come to fruition. If you like this video, make sure you leave it a like. If you didn't like it, smash that dislike button, and I will see you guys next Sunday.